Mr. President, how are you? Quite well. How are you? It's great to see you. Same here. Same here. It's really nice seeing you. Uh, first of all, thank you so much uh, for your um, acceptance and joining us uh, through this uh, online Instagram live. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. It's so important what you are doing, giving information to people every day. It allows people to stay informed. And this is a virus where you need to be informed. Mr. Adams, 100%, I agree with you. Uh, and it has been uh, the, the reason that we really needed you uh, to be with us uh, because you are the borough president of very important place, Brooklyn. Uh, and we do actually have so many Turkish people, Turkish Americans actually living in Brooklyn as well. And we, um, this is why we wanted to talk to you about, you know, and we know you're there. You're always out there. Uh, we see it. Uh, we see the work you have done that you're doing actually towards uh, towards all people, all the ethnic city, all the communities that that actually in your area. I mean, we know you. We, everybody knows you, um, and, and we're so grateful for that. If you want to say a couple words about who Eric Adams is, that would be very good to hear from you. Well, first of all, uh, Brooklyn is the Istanbul of America. You know, we, <laughs> we have a rich and large uh, Turkish community, and my relationship with the Turkish community goes so far back. I, um, <coughs> I visited Turkey uh, six, about five or six times. And each time I traveled there, it has been amazing. And I really thank the hospitality of not only Turkish community that's here in America, but also at home. Uh, so I am the Brooklyn Ball president, you know, for many people who don't know me, I used to be a police officer. I served for 22 years in the New York City Police Department. And then I became a state senator and now I'm in my second term as the Brooklyn Borough President. And it's extremely exciting because the role of the Borough President is to really uh, be your local voice. Uh, in New York City, of course, we have five boroughs. Um, Brooklyn is the largest of the five. And we have over 2.6 million people. If we were a separate city, we would be the third largest city in America. And what's important here is that 47% of Brooklynites speak a language other than English at home. And so we have many dual language speakers and I treat my office as a place that we welcome all the different languages and different cultures. And so I'm excited about being able to serve the community. As a person firsthand, I have seen so many times uh, that when we visited actually at the uh, at your place, uh, your workplace, and also in the town and in the other events, that you always welcome all the communities, you welcome all the people, and and the help you provide as a actually borough president, uh, and then your team that you provide all the you know the free help that you can provide it to your community. That we know that we have been seeing it, and, and this is why. As a Turkish community, we always will continue to support you. Uh, and, and we know that you're like all oh, Turkish friends, right? You are like Turkish <laughs> with us. <laughs> we know that. It is really important. Uh, and, and we know how active you are. Before even this pandemic, you know, you were all over the places, meeting all the people, communities, helping them, getting their concerns, answering their questions, uh, and, and meeting with so many people. And, you know, even in this pandemic, I, we see that you're not stopping, giving masks away, giving and trying to help people and answer their questions. So those are all actually very important to us because we have been in a situation that never seen before. I mean, uh, never, never seen before. And, and seeing, it, of course, a leader like you at this moment, you know, being out there, of course, you know, uh, with your uh, cautious, you know, with your, of course, being careful. Uh, but it's really important. And if you can tell us a little bit about how is your feelings, how is your thought about since this pandemic started? And you're right. The the pandemic has uh, really hit uh, the city and state and country uh, hard. And it's going to take a while before we readjust, adjust, particularly um, when you look at the Turkish community where you have a lot of small businesses, a lot of uh, Turkish restaurants and other establishments. 
and many of them are being closed for the period of time that they are closed. Some won't return to business. Some uh, will lose their business because of the high cost of rent, uh, because of the high cost of just really running a business in New York City. And so we are extremely concerned about making sure that government plays a real role in the recovery and building effort. Uh, we need help on the federal level. Our federal delegation, uh, they were able to get the uh, government, federal government, to give a relief in the form of what was called a PPP. Uh, that money was not enough to deal with all of our businesses, particularly our small uh, mother, mom and pop businesses, we like to call them. We also call them micro businesses here. But we have another wave of PPEs that's, uh, PPEs that's coming. And we want that money to get on the ground to our small uh, businesses. Um, the federal uh, payroll protection program, uh, the first wave just not do, did not do the job. And we want to make sure the next wave is ordered to do so. And we, we need to free up banks so that banks can have their own programs that would allow uh, small businesses to have, to have access to capital to get through this very challenging and difficult time. That's 100% right. And since, I mean, Brooklyn is, is huge. It's, there are so many businesses. There are so many shops and restaurants and businesses that I, I even know. They all close and they all actually definitely need help. And they've been providing help, providing, you know, support to to town, to city, to state, to federal government, all these years maybe. Uh, it is tough times. It's, it's you know, we, we believe it's a tough times to uh, be together and work together to get over with this, you know, struggle. Um, one thing, since you brought it that part, Mr. Adams, is uh, I'm sure that you're aware of it. So many people also raising questions to us when they say how to deal with the rent, how they're going to deal with this rent. They are having issues. I sometimes get calls from businesses in Brooklyn. They say, Mr. Ackman, even though this is, it was, I believe it was uh, right beginning of April. And then the landlord tells, tells the person, look, you got to pay my rent. Uh, right away, and he says, "Look, I I don't even have anyone coming in. I cannot. I'm not even can. I cannot even go to actually my business to run it." Um, and I hear uh, from also residential side from different people and families about that. I know it's it's a tough time. It's 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 maybe beyond our power to reach. But what would be your suggestion? Maybe since we mentioned that PPL also PP. So what is your suggestion? Will be to federal government about how to help to resolve this rent issue seems to became very important because imagine for three months, the lockdown, and after lockdown, there's a huge rent waiting for people, and especially for businesses to deal with it, uh, and also try to get back to their feet, you know, with the business. Well, first of all, uh, it's not your imagination, and it's not the imagination of those who have communicated uh, with you. Over 85% of the small businesses that apply for the uh, PPP uh, were turned down. They were unable to actually have uh, these small business loans uh, allocated to them and it hurt them uh, greatly. And so that's why the next uh, level of the, uh, the uh, federal payroll protection uh, program is going to have to focus on those businesses. But when you look at rent specifically, uh, one of the greatest areas the federal government could do is to allocate a fund that will cover, you know, three to four months of rent payment, particularly for New York City. New York City is a little different than other parts of the country. We should cater uh, the assistance from the federal government to really directly go to the areas that the businesses need. Here in New York, it's about rent. If we can cover four months of rent to allow businesses to stabilize themselves, that is the greatest level of support that we can show. And that's what I hear from my uh, from my business owners, particularly my retail stores and my restaurant that actually use rental space. Now, in, in Florida or another part of the country, they may need something else. 
So we shouldn't have a one size fit all uh, for our businesses as in the area of what type of assistance we're going to receive from the federal government. We should make sure that it caters to the needs of that particular uh, municipality. That will work perfectly if it really you know happens. Mm -hmm. um, and because when businesses are actually closed down, if the PP, you know, PPE can help with the payroll, with the other necessities, and if the four months rent at least four months of rent can be somehow, you know, provided to them. You're right. They can they can actually start uh, try to get better on this. Uh, but you know, those are those are the bigger bigger issues that we see. Uh, the, the the community talks about rent. The community talks about you know how they're going to be able to, of course, get back to business or get back to work. What is your thought, uh, Mr. Adams, about? How do you think there are, you know, there are so many different terrorists out there, but how do you think um, the Brooklyn, the New York will be able to get back to actually to business, the economy and safely? And how long do you think it's going to take to be able to uh, start it, even if it's slowly? Well, we are in a place of what, a term that's used often, uh, the new norm. It is the new way we're going to not only uh, do business, but how we're going to live. And the real, real fear, going back to your comment, uh, it's predicted that we will possibly lose 30 to 40 percent of our businesses. We just heard today that Lord & Taylor, a longtime clothing store, uh, stated that after the opening comes about, they are going to shut down for good. And so those are those are hundreds, if not thousands of employees. And so when you examine uh, the loss of 30 to 40 percent of our business, Many of our largest employers uh, come from the small business. The small business community is clearly the backbone of our city. And that's why it's important when we save a business, we're also saving the really the backbone of our city. If you just look at a particular restaurant, you're saving the cook, the dishwasher, the chef, uh, the person who manages um, the entire restaurant. So you're dealing with a large number of people who could lose their jobs in the, in the process. So our goal is to really focus attention on stabilizing these small businesses uh, by receiving that federal uh, assistance. And we see it every day, uh, the, the, the level of anxiety that people are experiencing as they deal with not only the uh, physical impact of COVID-19, but also the business impact. We're hoping the uh, state will start opening Sometime in uh, mid-May, the governor must make the ultimate decision. Uh, it may take until sometime in the beginning of June before you're going to see, see the real commerce that we're used to seeing. But we have to be patient. We can't put uh, profit in front of public health. And if, if we don't, we could be right back where we started from. Uh, many of the healthcare officials believe in October and November, a uh, coronavirus is going to come back with a vengeance. And so we need to be prepared. Definitely right about that, uh, Mr. President. And it comes all down to how the federal government is going to you know, react and how much they will be able to help uh, towards the actual, the, you know, those uh, small businesses to be able to survive. Um, but uh, that's the one thing I believe, and and hundred, you know, definitely, maybe slowly opening means less people, less employees, less visitors, less sales. But maybe it will be safer, safer to start. Of course, and the lives are more important right now, especially what you just mentioned uh, about the healthcare providers or the healthcare experts mentioned about second wave might come. So we have to be pretty much ready for that. It's everybody's talking, but right? everybody talks about testing. Everybody want to talk about how testing is possible. I was just hearing on the news that in Brooklyn, there were some parts they were able to do more testing now for walk-ins, actually. If you want to tell a little more about for uh, people that are in Brooklyn, uh, how they can you know be able to reach those testings and uh, how quickly do you think that's going to become a little faster? And that's that's still in formation. Uh, the goal has always been to ensure that Brooklyn uh, received the necessary tests uh, that will help us, number one, identify the cluster areas, and two, inform people so they won't go home and infect their entire families. 
Uh, we we did not get the response that we wanted to receive on a statewide and citywide level, but we started to see that now uh, location there was this there has been a Sears drive up location uh, in a, the Sears par parking lot in Brooklyn, but there are other locations that are going to open. We're beginning to see. Um, pharmacies will start doing some of the testing. There's also going to be testings around the antibodies because the science is still unclear on how much the antibodies would indicate if you, uh, it's almost like a vac vaccine that you won't get coronavirus if you already had it. But we're still looking into all of that science and to expand the testing in the, in the process. And so we're going to keep the public informed at different locations. Uh, in my conversation with the mayor, we talked about having urgent care centers do testing as well. And I've been speaking with some of the labs where we will have mobile testing. And so we're now going to start moving around and do testing at different locations. The goal is to do it as safe as possible to make sure that people are not infected, uh, infecting other people or get infected themselves. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Adams, for that valuable information. Uh, I know you're very busy. You know, it's we are so, you know so happy that and glad that uh, you were you were able to be with us today. What would be your recommendations for our community, right, Turkish American communities, and what would be your recommendation to us before actually we close, you know, we finish our streaming? Well, it's important to do what you're doing now, uh, as I shared uh, with the mayor and the governor's. Um, offices that we have to communicate with people where they are and use the modes of communication that people use. Uh, all the people who tune into your show, uh, we need to funnel information through you so you can communicate uh, to the people in your community. Not everyone uh, listen to the briefings from the president governor and the mayor. Not everyone reads American uh, newspapers or listen to American uh, radio and TV. We find different ways of communicating. I learned that in Brooklyn. When I look at the, uh, the various communities, my, the Turkish community, the Chinese community, the Caribbean community, and even the African-American and Jewish communities, they all have different methods of communicating through their houses of worship, through Instagram Live like this, or just through day-to-day -day, uh, coming together. And I think it's important that we continue to use what you're doing uh, to, to get the information out. And then people could take some basic steps. 100%. And uh, actually, we will be recording this uh, anyway, and it will be on YouTube. I know you're busy. I know that you have other work that you have to do, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And it was very nice seeing you. And, and I'm looking forward to see you again. Yes, thank you. Take care. Take care. Talk to you, Ms. Adams. Bye-bye.